Jesus says, Don't give up, my weary brides. I'm coming very soon. June 8, 2020 Words from Jesus through Sister Claire Spoken by Jackie Claire began, Thank you for your prayers, heart dwellers. I know many of you have been praying for us, and it really has had a good effect. The Lord visited his weary servant today. He has picked up on what I felt like, a sack of bones, and he lifted me up with new hope. You see, in the doings of getting this community established, I think I've aged 20 years. But now we have a solid core of people who are truly overqualified to manage all that must be accomplished here in the physical realm, and they are good prayer warriors. And with that, I can take a deep breath and let go. I've been doing that, really, but the fact is, I'm very tired and have nothing left for music. It's almost like it never existed in my life. There's just no inspiration. Yet I know he has brought me to this point in order to release me for that very thing. You've probably noticed my voice sounds dry and hoarse. It is very dry at 8,500 feet. Well, I need to shut up and stop making excuses. Today he touched me and I'm so very grateful. I had been given a song on the keyboard one day and then I went to record the flute with it. And Jesus took over and played that flute so beautifully, so far out of my skill range, that I was awestruck in the end. Well, during dwelling prayer today, he played that song, and I could see him clearly in the garden. The name of the song is Heart Crying Out, and it's about Jesus being in the garden, missing his bride and crying out. I could see him so clearly in the garden, playing from his heart, calling to his weary bride, and then I saw myself coming to him, dressed in a lovely, ethereal wedding gown with a crown of pink roses on my head. And when I approached him, he placed another crown on my head, which always means a big trial is coming. Not something you really look forward to, but there are always big trials. Well, I really didn't want to see that. At that point, he took my hand and walked me through this lovely garden into a gazebo, where there were two benches facing each other. He sat down opposite of me and leaned forward, his elbows on his knees, gazing deeply into my eyes, he said. My bride, my beloved, don't give up on me now. I'm coming for you very soon. Oh Jesus, I'm so dry and so beset with temptations of food, and I don't know where to turn, where to go to get help anymore. I see myself as hopeless. I've no desire for music. It is such a grind, and everyone is so much better at it. I labor for what? A song that takes a month or a year to produce? I'm tired, Lord. I want to get up and keep going, but the song in my heart is gone. I'm ashamed of how I've acted and how selfish I've been. Your voice is so important to me. Is that not enough? Then in the next moment, John Michael Talbot's song played. Rejoice, highly favored daughter. The Lord is with you, dressed as a bride among women, for you shall be the mother of Jesus. Holy Spirit given to you, you shall conceive and bring forth the fruit of salvation. And when it was playing, I thought of the Blessed Mother, and I also thought of us in our habits, that we are also brides that bring forth fruit from the working of the Holy Spirit within us. 
Jesus replied to my thoughts. She will help you. Please press into her intercession, my love. Then the next song that played was Swift Away, which was one of my songs about the rapture. Yes, yes, swiftly I will take you away, very swiftly. You will not even catch your breath before you are sailing through the universe with me. Then he changed the subject again. Your voice is important to me, so important to me. I created you for this. But Lord, the time is so short. What can I do? It takes me years to do a song. He was silent. Then I heard, I'm still here, listening to your thoughts. Now, who is the one evading and complicating? Someone had pulled a card about not to be evading and complicating things, making them more difficult, and I chided them for it, and now the Lord is chiding me. Then the next song played in the background. Emmanuel, our God, is with us, and if God is for us, who can stand against us? Our God is with us, Emmanuel. And more lyrics. For all who stumble in the darkness, behold, your light has come. If God is with us, who can stand against us? Behold now the kingdom, behold now the kingdom. See with new eyes. See with new eyes, things are not now as they were. Before I brought you down to Taos, you had your sheep and horses and lived a sweet life of prayer, knowing all the time that I was preparing you for something else. Have I not fulfilled the vision I gave you of souls praying in the woods? Have I not been faithful to you, Claire? O oh Lord, forgive me, truly you have. Okay then, I've set the stage for you. I've brought you the finest people to help with this work and succeed after you. They are real, sincere, honest and want nothing more than what I want. And I want them here, faithful to this work. I have taken the burdens of your back, Claire. Now you are free to create music. It's sad to say, but I have no inspiration, no desire. Please restore me. Please bring me back into music. Maybe even much stronger than I was before. This is why I want you to go to my mother. She knows what you need. She knows what to do. Cleave to her and depend on the graces I've entrusted to her to bring you into your calling. I'm serious about this. Beloved, she will help you. You need only ask. Yes, the rosary is a good prayer, but you may also talk to her. She loves to hear the sound of your voice in more ways than one. Claire, you are the most unlikely person to succeed in what I've given you to do in this world. But I've news for you. I don't need your talent or skill. I need to be glorified through you, by your simple, plodding perseverance. Choices with your time. Good choices. You know the order in which I want you to work. Prayer, messages, music. It's that simple. My mind drifted off to the persecution and the enemies in the area. Don't worry about them. I've taken care of them already. What I have planned will put an end to their persecution.
How can that be, Lord? Don't you want us to be persecuted so we resemble you? I don't want you to worry about the things I've already taken care of. I want you to write and play and sing music. Period. Can you do this for me? With the strength I don't have, but the graces your mother has been entrusted with, I'm sure I can do anything. I just need my heart back. I need a new heart, Jesus. It has been a very long journey to this place and I'm so spent. In the natural, it is beyond the realm of possibilities, but in the supernatural, it is finished. You must get into the supernatural realm of everything is possible with God. You must be convinced that I can raise the dry bones put flesh on them and a new heart within them. I want you to know that you are among the thousands of my servants who are extremely tired and spent. All of you have been through battles with hell. All of you have taken heavy losses of heart, soul and inspiration. All of you, but I'm here to tell you, and anyone else who cares to listen, that I'm about to do a new thing in your lives. I'm about to rejuvenate you in ways you never imagined. Not in the world's ways, but in my ways. Lord, are you asking me to go to your mother? But the evangelicals listening in still have not accepted her role as you laid it out in the scripture. They are totally blind to the reality of her assignments from you even though they are clear in the scriptures. Based on that, how can you prosper them if they refuse to enlist her intercession? I've my ways, little one. Don't you worry about those who are afraid to see, lest they lose their hard standing in the Christian community. They can continue to cling to their laurels and protect their good names, but you, do only one thing, draw closer to her and let her intercession bring new life to you. Lord, forgive my unbelief. It is a very ugly and hurtful thing for you to have when you know me so well, but I forgive you. Do you understand? The devil through clever twisting of solid truth, has turned the people called by my name against the full equipping I had in mind for them. He has turned them against the Lord's Supper, even though I said it seven times. This is my body, this is my blood. And he has come with spirits that are familiar with counterfeiting, imitating saints, my Holy Mother, and even the intercession of the Great Cloud. In doing this, he has deprived the people called by my name of 50% of the power they could have had in this world, the power to overcome themselves and the enemy. These present-day Christians are indeed strong in proclaiming and living my word, but they are missing the bridal chamber and the instruction from the mother of the bride. But I'm going to change this. You will see my hand move and these lies will come crashing down in the lives of those who prefer the truth to the standing of their name and ministry in the community. But you, little one, keep your heart and mind in the praises sung to me and continue to implore my mother, both for this nation and our music. Please believe in me, Claire. Please believe. We have come so far. Look around you. Look at the miracle of the community I've called together around you and Ezekiel. You see, I've done my part. I've been faithful. Now it is your turn.
And for those of you, my weary ones, who are struggling day by day, I say to you, do not give up. Consider what I've told Mother Claire. Consider her weaknesses. Consider that I've been faithful to her in bringing to pass a prayer community in the wilderness, which I promised her over 22 years ago. I'm holding out an invitation to you. My mother has been given many, many graces to distribute to my people because she was so very faithful on earth and offered up the dearest thing in her life for your sakes. She has been given many supernatural gifts that she uses with great wisdom and discretion. You have only to study the wedding at Cana to see her influence in heaven. Go back to Mother Claire's teaching on her. There are seven of them. Go back and study the scriptures she was given to prove to you that my mother is a force of goodness in your lives and in this world even now. It is all because of the graces I've given her, the angels I've assigned to her, which she uses to carry out my will in the world. Do not continue in your obstinate unbelief. Rather, seek out the truth. I love you. I am with you, my weary ones. You have all come so far and done so much good. Rise up then and get ready for the move of my spirit on this earth. Rise up and walk in truth, not preferring the ignorance of men, who for generations have been taught error. You have only to approach my mother and ask of her proofs that she is my appointed intercessor. Here another revelation from Jesus regarding his mother, Mary. On the mountaintop, where the Master is found, there too is Mary, the universal mother, she who was made woman in the second era, so that she could perform the prodigy of the incarnation of the Divine Word. Man has scrutinized and judged Mary and the way that Jesus came to the world, and those judgments have torn at the garments of purity of the maternal spirit, whose heart spilled out its blood over the world. I've come in this time to throw back the veil of the unknown, to remove the doubt of the unbeliever and to give him knowledge of the spiritual teachings. From my truth, which is like a road, men have made many side roads, on which most of the time they get lost. And while some seek the intercession of the Celestial Mother and others to ignore her, her mantle of love and tenderness envelops all eternally. From the beginning of time, I revealed the existence of the Spiritual Mother of whom the prophets spoke before she came to the world. Mary was sent to manifest her virtue, her example and her perfect divinity. She was not one more woman among humanity. She was a distinctive woman, and the world saw her life, knew her way of thinking and feeling, and knew the purity and grace of her body and spirit. She is an example of simplicity, humility, abnegation, and love. And in spite of the fact that her life has been known by the world of that time, and of succeeding generations, there are many who do not know of her virtue and her virginity. They cannot explain the fact that she was virgin and mother because man is unbelieving by nature and has not been able to judge the divine works with a prepared spirit. If they studied the scriptures and analyzed the incarnation of Mary and the lives of her antecessors, they would come to know who she is.
The most tender love of God for his creatures has no form. Nevertheless, in the second era, it took the form of a woman, the mother of Jesus. Understand that Mary has always existed, since her essence, her love and her tenderness have always been in the divinity. How many theories and confusions have men forged about Mary, about her maternity, her conception and her purity, how they have blasphemed. The day that they understand the truth of that purity, they will say, better would it be never to have been born. Tears of fire will burn their spirits, and then Mary will envelop them in her grace. The Divine Mother will protect them under her mantle, and the Father will forgive them, saying to them with infinite love, keep vigil and pray, because I forgive you, and in you I forgive and bless the world. This is an excerpt from the Third Testament, chapter 20. The link to the whole chapter is below the video.